to that, that was being spread to cause punishment for the sins of the earth. Uh, so we need to follow uh, what, what we are being told to help uh, not spread this. Uh, and just some, uh, some announcements um, from the church. Uh, revival that we had planned for April 4th through the 8th has been postponed uh, till further notice. Um, just due to the things that are going on, um, we just felt that it was necessary to postpone this until we can figure out what's going on, how long this virus is going to take, and then we could go further from there. Uh, the fair has been canceled, so if you were going to, we're going to help with that, know that that has been canceled. I appreciate everybody that had signed up and had, had was looking forward to helping with that. Um, I know a few weeks ago I had asked that everybody would um, would fast for the revival that was coming up. And, and so obviously since we have postponed the revival, um, there's not a need to, to continue to fast for that. Um, as it may be a couple of months before we can do this revival again. But if God so leads you, please fast for this virus pandemic. Um, fast that, that God would remove this virus from our country. Um, also, we, we've had people ask about how can we still give to the church? Is, you know, the, the church still has, you know, bills that have to be made. Um, there's going to be people that will have needs that the church will be able to help during this time. And so you can mail that, that tie, that giving into the church at 11025. West and Ellen Road, Christian River, Florida, 34428. And uh, we have made a post on Facebook on this page uh, that's being live streamed um, where you can find that address um, on there. Uh, we're also working on an online, online giving platform that once we get that all worked out, all the bugs fixed on that and everything and everything uh, to go on that, we'll Post that on this page also where you can find that to, to be able to give with a credit card, a debit card, or even an online check. Uh, so uh, those are some ways that we're working on. Um, this is all, you know, something that has just come about this week. Uh, so, you know, and you've noticed that we've turned to the side, we're preaching to the side of the sanctuary. That's due to the camera that we had purchased that we thought would work uh, due to, hey, I'm not no technical guy. Um, it didn't zoom like we thought it would. So it, you know, for me to be on the stage, I'd look like a little tiny guy up there. Um, Hey, and y'all know I ain't no little tiny guy and you wouldn't really be able to see me. And, and so to be able to, you know, make it real life and to really, uh, make the service great, we decided to turn it sideways and, and, uh, be able to, to make the live stream real. And so those are some some announcements, um, you know, all church activities as of right now are postponed, um, but keep a watch on this page because um, I'm in the works of, of coming up with some different devotionals throughout the week, uh, some different Bible studies and different things to keep you involved, uh, to keep you fed and to keep you um, active with the church family. Uh, so uh, let's go to the word to the Lord with some prayer and then uh, Malachi will come and lead us through some some great worship. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for uh, all your many blessings. And Father, we thank you for the possibility that even though we cannot gather in this building, in this structure, that Lord, we can still gather as a church family. Uh, Lord, we may be in our individual homes. We may be with our family sitting in front of a, a computer, in front of a TV, in front of a phone. Uh, Lord, watching on a on a, uh, through a, this live stream video or Father, some of us may have to watch later on on a DVD or on a, listen through a CD or some means like that. But Father, we thank you that we're still able to be fed spiritually by you, Father. And we just ask now that you would continue to be with us. Lord, watch over us and keep us safe. And Lord, just, just minister to us through this time. Lord, I pray that you'd be with Malachi as he comes to lead us in a time of worship. Uh, through the singing of your word. And Lord, I pray that you just bless us through this time. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' wonderful, precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, I know you're, you don't have a hymnal at home because uh, I got one 
those songs apart. So it, we don't have a way to show you the lyrics to these songs, but you can always pull them up on Google or something and look up the lyrics if you don't know or you really want to hear it. Our first song is going to be able to sing the Wonder Story, and our uh, hymn book is usually 537. I say that because we do have um, a person here with the hymn book, so I want her to be able to participate.
But this would be our normal uh, offering time and then um, when we would uh, generally do fellowship time, but due to the coronavirus, we had stopped doing the fellowship time. And I decided we'd change it to a time of prayer, time of prayer. And so Philippians 4, 6 says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And you can post prayer requests here on this page. Um, if you have a prayer, um, since we're not going to have prayer meeting Wednesday night, uh, as far as gathering together, uh, please don't think that, well, I can't send in prayer requests. Uh, you can text those to me um, at 352-436-3191. My number's on the front of the bulletin if you still have uh, a bulletin in front of, uh, you know, in your Bible. Um, if you hopefully still have one of your old bulletins, on the back of that bulletin is a list of the old uh, of the deacon's phone numbers on the back. Um, also, you can um, send a message to this Facebook page. You can comment. You can send me a, a message on my Facebook page. Uh, but some some prayer requests that, that I had that I uh, have been given uh, this this week. Um, Tom broke off. Uh, I got a call from his his sister uh, the other night. Uh, message from his brother. Uh, he's in Citrus Memorial right now, uh, and he has some severe health concerns that we need to be praying for. Uh, he's in very bad health, uh, so be lifting him up in some uh, some prayers this week. Uh, Miss Leslie Starling, her family lost uh, her father-in-law this past Thursday night, so be lifting her family up in prayer also. Uh, so keep them in your prayers. I know there's other prayer uh, requests, uh, so again, comment those. Uh, you can comment them on this video. Uh, you can send them, again, through those ways that we're given. Uh, and we've also posted some, play, uh, some posts on this page where you can give prayer requests also. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time of, of worship, this time of meeting together, Lord, as a church, Father, as a body of Christ. And, and Lord, I do come now, Father, lifting up to you, Tom. Father, you know his situation. Lord, you know where he's at. Lord, you know what he's going through. And you know what is attacking his body. And Father, I lift him up to you right now, Father, asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would reach down and heal his body. Lord, do you take this sickness from him, Father? Lord, I pray that you'd be with Miss Leslie and her family, Lord, as they mourn the loss of this loved one. Father, that you would wrap your arms of comfort around that family, Lord. Father, we know that we've heard of reports of, I believe, of eight people in our community in Citrus County, and maybe more, Lord, at last I heard was eight, that have caught this coronavirus. Lord, many in the state of Florida and across our country and across our world, Lord, that have this virus. And Father, I pray, Lord, that we may repent of our sins and turn from our wicked ways, that, Lord, you may heal our land, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would heal our country, heal our state, heal our county, heal us, Lord, that we may truly wholeheartedly come to you, Father. So, Lord, be with us now as we continue to worship you. And to hear from you today. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' wonderful, precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, our next song, um, if you do have a hymnal by chance, uh, is 334, Blessed Assurance. Um, we do have blessed assurance during these troublesome times. And they are from Jesus Christ. Uh, it's in scripture that we have so much assurance of a better hope, a better future, better life. Um, not only when we fulfill things, but if we live our life according to Jesus. So let's just jump into this. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Spirit watching 
Peace. 
last song, it seems very appropriate during this time. Um, I told the story before. It, it's, the song is "It Is Well with My Soul," and it's him on the four ten. But I feel it's still appropriate to tell the story because every time I hear it, it still gives me goosebumps. It's about this man that was traveling from Europe to America for a business trip, and he told his wife and his three daughters to stay home during this time. Um, that was so he could arrange things over there. And eventually he called for his family to come overseas on the ship. It was probably 17, 1600, somewhere around there. So it wasn't a slow journey. And out in the middle of the sea, something happened to the ship and the ship sunk. His wife made it to um, someplace either in America or Europe, but she was saved, but his three daughters were killed during this time. And she sent him a tele telegram saying, I'm saved, daughters are gone. And so many times people kept saying, man, how are you doing? How are you doing? And the one thing that he said, he wrote this song, and he said, it is well with my soul. Amen. So during this time, I hope that we can come to a point where we can say it is well with my soul when it's going on today. Because it wasn't that he was okay with things that were going on. It's because Jesus gave him the peace to get through that tragic event. And we're in a tragic event now, every single one of us. And then I hope that Jesus lays a peace on your heart and says it is well with your soul.
their families, as we alike their friends. Because, Lord, during this time, we cannot forget that you are still the Lord through this pandemic. We can't forget that. And, Lord, I am so blessed that you have given me peace during this time. So, Lord, I pray that your word is still shared during a pandemic. I believe it is yes. possible. And, Lord, I pray that your hand continue to stay in this, continue to be with the, the families that are under our care. Continue to be with the people that are lost. Bring them to us that we can still share the gospel in a way that we've never done before. Overall, let your will be done in this world, I pray. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All righty. This morning, we're going to be in Acts chapter 8. Um... First, I'm going to look at Romans 13, but it will be our main text will be Acts chapter 8. This morning, we're, we're completely different than anything any of us have ever seen before. We, we've never been in a situation like this before. Yes, there's been viruses. Yes, there's been epidemics. Yes, there's been states of emergencies, but never to this magnitude. Never has anyone alive seen this kind of thing. We, we were told to stay home, self-quarantine, stay away from others. Never have preachers preached empty sanctuaries to this magnitude with cameras set up in front of us. I heard a pastor friend make a, make a comment just the other day that he heard someone say that all at once, all preachers have become televangelists. All at one time. We, we've all, all pastors, pretty much at one, on one Sunday, have become televangelists. And let me tell you, this was not my first choice. This was not really what I wanted to do. And I prayed hard, and this was, this has weighed very hard on me about this. But let me read to you Romans 13, verses 1 through 7. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resisteth shall resi receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do thou which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the word, the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger of, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. For if, wherefore he must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. This tells us that unless the government does goes against the principles of God, that, that we are to be obedient to them. And by being obedient to them, we are being obedient to God. Now, I want to have the church family here. I, I miss seeing everyone here. This is very awkward. This is very weird, preaching to an empty sanctuary this morning. But as I've said multiple times, I will be obedient to God above all else. And as I've prayed about this a lot, I spent a lot of time in deep prayer I've had a very heavy burden this week of what is the right thing to do. And I feel that this is what God is directing me to do. And I, I don't want anyone to get sick. I want us to do what is right. And I believe God is telling me through Romans here that we are to be obedient to the government, which says, hey, you know, no more than 10 people in a, in a gathering. And so this morning, I want us to, to look at what is the true church? What is truly the church? 
So if you'll look with me in Acts chapter 8 this morning, verses 1 through 4, I, I believe we can see some things here that will show us what truly God has defined or told us what the church is. We must not be defined by this building, this sanctuary, this structure. And this morning I hope to show you that this church, this building that I'm standing in is not the church. But it is the people. It's me. It's you. So Acts chapter 8 verses 1 through 4 says this. It says there starting in verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there was a great persecution. Against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. Except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentations over him. And as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hauling men and women committed them to prison. Therefore they that were, therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for the scripture that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you'd open our hearts and our ears. Lord, speak to us this morning through your Holy Spirit. Father, as we're not gathered together here in this building, in this structure, but Father, as we are placed in our individual homes with our families, Lord, I pray that you would help us to hear from you what it is that you would have us to learn from this pandemic. Lord, what it is you'd have us to gain from being scattered abroad through this thing, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to our hearts. Speak to me, Father, as your shepherd to this flock. Lord, I ask these things in your wonderful, precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Here we see in Acts that the Christian, the Christians, the body of Christ was being persecuted. It says there in verse 1 that there was great persecution against the church, and this great persecution caused the church to be scattered abroad. So the first point, the first thing I want us to see this morning is that they were scattered abroad. If the church was scattered abroad, then, then what was meant by the word church here could not be the body or not the, the building. It, it could not be the building, the structure, but the body of Christ. Now, now we in today's society, in the 21st, 22nd, whatever century we're in, we, we meet in a, in a sanctuary, in a large building such as we have here at Red Love. But look with me in verse 3 there. He says, as for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house. It doesn't say he entered into every sanctuary, causing havoc. He, he entered into every house. The church in the early, in the first century, the early church, the first church, they met in houses. They, they met where you're meeting right now. You know, they, they, two or three families, four or five families, they met together in each other's houses and they had church. Because it wasn't formed of a, a sanctuary such as we have here at Red Level. Now, I'm not saying we need to tear this sanctuary down and start meeting in each other's homes. I'm not saying that. But if we look at the beginning of the book of Acts to what Jesus said just before ascending to heaven, we see that this persecution is actually causing the church, the body of Christ, to fulfill the mission, the command that was given. So Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says this. Jesus is speaking to the, the followers, his followers, not just the 12 disciples, not just his 12, 11 apostles at this point. Because Judas has hung himself. But to the 11 apostles, not just 11, but at least 120, if not more, have gathered around him just before he ascends to heaven. And he says this to them. He says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in all Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now look back at, at, at chapter 8, verse 1. He says there at the, at the very end of the verse there, he says, And they were scattered abroad throughout 
the regions of Judea and Samaria. What did Jesus, Jesus tell them to do before he ascended to earth or ascended to heaven? He tells them to be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. Guess where the early church had stayed? They had stayed in Jerusalem. They'd been gathering in each other's homes in Jerusalem. Now Paul, Saul, at that time, Saul, he's going to the houses of these church people, of the body of Christ, and he's causing havoc. And he causes them to scatter abroad. He calls them, causes them to leave the church. He causes them to leave the houses, to go out into the cities and go out into the highways and the hedges, to get outside of the city of Jerusalem and get out into Samaria and Judea and do what Jesus said to do in Acts 1 8 and become witnesses unto him. He didn't say just stay in Jerusalem and be my witness. On the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, fell upon the apostles, on, onto the disciples, onto the followers of Jesus, it wasn't just the 11 that, at that time, it now became the 12 because. They had brought on, um, I believe it was, his name was Mathesis. They, they brought on another guy to make it 12 again. So it wasn't just those guys. It was 100. We we're told in Acts chapter 2, I believe, that there was 120 in the upper room. And they're praying together. They're, they're not in the big sanctuary having a prayer meeting. They're in an upper room in somebody's house in an upper room praying. They're not in a big church building. They're in an upper room praying. And the Holy Ghost fell upon the people. Peter goes out into the streets. He doesn't go into the temple to preach the sermon. He goes out into the streets. And 3,000 people are saved. Now let me say, we're not being persecuted. Some government officials not coming into our sanctuary and dragging us out and beating us and taking us to jail. But this virus has moved us outside of these walls. These pews this morning are empty. There isn't the first person sitting in the pew. Now if I sit in a chair, they're not sitting in a chair. We're sitting in chairs this morning. They are empty this morning. You are at home. You are not here. You are in your own communities, in your own neighborhoods. Maybe God is saying, church, it's time that we realize that the church is not this building. It's not this structure. It is me and it's you, it's us. Amen. It's time that we realize we can have church in our homes. We can have church at our jobs. We can have church at the grocery store. We can have church at the gas station. We can have church on the streets. Yes. Peter preached a sermon on the streets of Jerusalem and 3,000 people got saved. People, it's time that we have church on the streets and see 3,000 people get saved. We may not, I might not preach a sermon on the streets and see 3,000 people get saved. But guess what? I'm preaching sermons in the church, in this building, in this structure, and people are not coming to the altars and getting saved. It's time we get out on the streets and preach the sermons in the streets. Right. We're the church, and it's time that we be the church and stop thinking it's just because we can't meet inside these four walls and, 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 and that we cannot be the church. We should be the church seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, except for this year. It's a leap year. We've got to do it 366 days this year. We are to give our whole life to God. Not just when we are here inside these four walls. These four walls does not make us a church. These four walls are just a structure, and God can take this structure just like that. Maybe God is sending us outside these walls to be the church on the streets, out in our communities, outside, out in our neighborhoods, to be the church to those around us, to those that are hurting. We've been scattered abroad, if you will. As here at Red Level, we have people watching this live stream right now from all over. I know of someone right now in the panhandle. I can't think of the name of the town she lives in. But she's up in the panhandle watching this live stream video right now. I know someone down in Pasco County watching this live stream right now. 
I know people all over Citrus County watching this. I've had people contact me from, from Alabama and Kentucky and, and Indiana asking when they can go online. And some of those are watching right now. We got people watching all over the, the United States. People, let me tell you, this is God's way of using us to be the church. Maybe this is the way God's saying, hey, it's time for us Americans to quit sitting on our butts and being comfortable. And it's time for us to be scattered abroad. But the thing is, is no matter where you are, God is telling us to be the church. Which brings me to my next point, verse 4. Look what he does. Look what happens when they're scattered abroad. Verse 4 says, Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So our second point this morning is they preached the word. Now I know you're thinking, Pastor, that's your job to preach the word. And you're right, God has called me to preach, to be a preacher, to be a pastor. But let me tell you, we're all called to share our faith. We're all called to tell others about Jesus. And the term preach simply means this, to proclaim something. And here it is to proclaim the gospel, which we've all been called to do. We are to proclaim the gospel. We are to proclaim our faith, to tell people about what Jesus has done in our lives. And we are sitting in the pews of this building. We are not doing that. When we are sitting in this structure, we're not proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. We're not telling people about our faith. We're just sharing with other Christians. Not that that doesn't need to happen. We, we need to encourage each other. We need to build each other up. But we also need to get outside of this building. We need to get out into the highways and to the hedges and tell the people about Jesus. Luke 14, 23. says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Now this was a teaching that Jesus was giving a parable. And Jesus meant it for us to learn from. That there was plenty of room in the kingdom of God. And that we need to go out and, and beat the bushes and win the lost. The beginning of the lesson there, there, that a certain man had, a, had made a supper, a great supper, a feast. This famous person made this feast and sent his servants to tell those he had invited that the feast was ready. They go and they tell the, those that were invited, hey... The feast is ready. It's time to come and eat. But all those that were invited, they made their excuses. Hey, hey, you know, I got this going on. And, hey, it's time to harvest my crop. Hey, it's time to thresh my wheat. Hey, it's time to do this. Hey, it's time to do that. And they didn't come. So the famous man, he says, hey, go out into the streets and the hedges and the highways and invite the poor people, the homeless people, all those that I would not normally invite. Tell them I have made a feast and they are invited. Let me tell you, we have made the feast and people aren't showing up. They're not coming into this building, into these four walls. And maybe God is using this virus as a way to scatter us abroad, to get us out of the church, to get us the church, not this structure, but the body of Christ out of this structure. He's getting us out into the streets, out into the highways, out into the hedges, out to where the lost is, out to where the people need to hear about him. Ephesians 11, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 12 says this. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 12 there is, you know, the King James Version says for the perfecting of the saints. Some other versions say for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Tony Evans says this. About verses 11 and 12 there. He says some people attend church only for their own benefit. But that's not what being a church member looks like. That's called being a leech. God saved and equipped you for the work of the ministry. The work of service. Why? To build up the body. It's time that we be the church. The church that God has called us to be. 
to get out and beat the bushes to tell people about him. This world is in a panic. We as Christians need to be in prayer. The world is in fear. We need to turn to Christ. This world is going crazy. We need to lead them to Christ for salvation. The only hope this world has, the only hope for this world is Christ and his shed blood. And if you're watching this program this morning and you have questions, obviously doing a, a, an invitation, you can't walk the aisle. You can't come forward for salvation. You can't come forward for baptism. You can't come forward for church membership. So I thought, hey, how are we going to do an invitation? I, I've, I've never done a church service. Well, the exception of one, an ordination service. But how do we do a church service where we preach the gospel and ask people to come forward when they can't come forward because they're watching on a, a, a video? I want you to know that we're here. I want you to know that you can, re that you can respond. You can simply comment on this video. You can simply message this Facebook page. You can simply message me on Facebook, Chris Priest. Look me up. I'm the follow, look till you find the goofy guy. Uh, you can call me 352-436-3191. It should be in the title of the, of the video. If you look at the title of the video, um, we put it in there. Um, it's on the, it's on the, um, church bulletin. Uh, if you get one of the church bulletins, it's on the church website. It's on, you know, there's multiple places you can find this. Google Red Level Baptist Church. Uh, go to our uh, church uh, website and it's on there. Our deacon's phone numbers are on that website. Um, so there's multiple ways you can get in contact with us. Um, and by all means, contact myself, contact one of our deacons. Any of us would love to talk to you further about salvation, about baptism, about church membership. Um, call the church phone number. If you call that, listen to the message. Uh, on the answering machine is my cell phone number. It says there in case of emergency. Let me tell you, if you're seeking salvation, if you're seeking baptism, one of those things, that is an emergency. You call me day or night. My cell phone stays on 24 hours a day. Uh, so, and it's by my bedside. You call me, I will answer that phone. Uh, and I will, uh, if, if for some odd reason I don't have cell phone service, leave me a message. I will call you back as soon as that message comes through. So I want you to know, we want to help you. We want to be there for you. Uh, you know, if God has touched you in any way through this message, please comment on this. Um, please share this video. The more you share this video, the more it gets out to other people to hear this video. Uh, and again, be the church. God has called us to be the church. We're, we can't save people by sitting on our butts. Uh, we don't save people anyways. All we do is lead people to God for God to save them, uh, for Jesus to sh save them through his shed blood. God says, I draw them onto me. Uh, I draw them onto them. So we just be faithful and plant seeds. But we can't plant seeds by sitting on our butt. You know, I, I love gardening. I, pl I love planting vegetables. And, uh, you know, I can't get my vegetables planted by sitting on my butt in the, in the easy chair. You know, it'd be awesome if we could. Uh, that'd be a whole lot easier. But uh, my, my vegetable garden ain't never going to get planted if I just keep sitting in my easy chair. You know, the Word of God isn't going to get planted in the lost people's hearts if we just keep sitting in the chairs and in the pews. We got to get out there in the highways and the hedges and we got to beat the bushes and we got to tell people about Jesus Christ. So, you know, contact us in any of those formats. Uh, we'll put a post on Facebook um, in, in, after we get done going live uh, in ways that you can contact us. And we'd love for you to contact us in any of those ways to, to help you, to, to pray with you. Uh, again, if you have prayer requests, uh, please send them to us so that we can be praying for you. Um, and let's go to the Lord in prayer as we close this morning. Father, we just thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to gather together as your church. Lord, and as you've spread us abroad, as you've scattered us abroad this morning, 
uh, throughout Citrus County, throughout the state of Florida, throughout the United States, Father. I thank you for those that have watched this morning. Lord, that, uh, that, that people have, have joined us and, and watched all over uh, this place today, Lord. Uh, Father, I thank you for those that have faithfully watched with us today. And Lord, I, I pray, Father, that your word uh, would, would go out, Father, this morning and stir the hearts of those that have heard. Lord, that we would be the church, the true church, Lord, that you've called us to be. Father, that, that we would be activated like you activated the church in Jerusalem, the early church, Lord. That we wouldn't be comfortable in this structure no longer. But, Lord, that we would get out into the highways and the hedges. And, Lord, that we would beat those bushes. And, Lord, that we would plant the seeds, Father, of salvation and the gospel message to others, Lord. That they would have the opportunity, Lord, to come to you for salvation. Lord, that we would do our part and be obedient and faithful to you and what you've called us to do. And Lord, we just love you and thank you and praise you and ask all these things in Jesus' wonderful, precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a good day.